I did not have sexual relations with that woman. Yes or no, did you ever take banned substances to enhance your cycling performance? Yes. I had no prior knowledge of the planned assault on Nancy Kerrigan. I am deeply sorry for my irresponsible and selfish behavior I engaged in. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Oops! The Podcast. I'm Julio Gallarotti. I'm joined by Francis Ellis. Francis, how are you? I had some chocolate. Feel good. That's good. Some dark chocolate. chocolate. You ever eat dark chocolate? Of course. It's great. Got a little bit of caffeine in it. Not much sugar. Antioxidants. Yeah, I just eat like one or two squares and it gives me a nice little blood uh, sugar boost that's somewhat level. That's very nice. Yeah. That's a good, uh, a good little compromise. Hell yeah. Let me ask you something. Sure. Spanking. Spanking. <laughs> Where do you stand on spanking? <laughs> Dude, I remember when I aged out of spanking finally. Like my mom tried to spank me and I was just hysterically laughing as she was doing it. Oh. I feel so bad looking back on it. That's where you where you took this. Oh, you mean sexual I'm spanking? I'm glad we can get into both sides of this cuz I I do want to talk about both sides. Of it. Oh god, awkward. So, um as a parent, when you become a parent, will you spank your children? I don't know, dude. Spanking seems like I, I have I have trouble grasping like how effective it actually is. And I just picture the wooden spoon, which is like an Italian classic spanking mechanism. Mm -hmm. I wasn't being beaten by my parents. You know, I mean, my mom is five feet tall. You know, what I mean, her spank isn't particularly powerful. Mm -hmm. So, you know, nothing really to fear. But I don't I'm not against the idea of some sort of physical, you know, repercussions for the for my kids being assholes. So I'm not against spanking, I guess. And I think spanking is potentially a good way to do it. All right. Well, so hold on. If you're saying you don't know about spanking, but you are okay with potential physical uh, punishments, mm -hmm. what else would you levy? I don't know, dude. Like grabbing them by the shirt and fucking pulling them up. <laughs> you little motherfucker. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Listen, Should I do. I, I call child protective you know, services now, like as some kind of pre pre crog pre crime. It's like Minority Report. Once he has a child, he will be this. <laughs> I mean, dude, listen. I don't want my kids to grow up to be pieces of shit. So if that means I have to smack them around a little bit, I'm not against that in theory. Who knows what'll happen when we'll cross that bridge when we get there? I think spanking is a pretty, you know, um, you know, PG version of beating your kid. Mm -hmm. Spanking. Well, okay, look. What do you think? Look, I, there's beating your kid and then there's like spanking. Yeah. Beating to me is like you take a fucking, like, you know, goodwill hunting. Right. Leaving yeah, yeah. bruises on the kid, you know, <laughs> psychological trauma. Oh, uh, all that kind of stuff. Um, the, the, that's beating your kid. Right. You know, where they, where they need to, they need to see a deep seated therapist right if if you're drawing blood or leaving marks that's beating yeah right um or if they're limping or if there are hairline fractures yeah um, <laughs> whatever all the horrors that you hear about yeah but um you know it's funny because i was yelling at the dog the other day mm -hmm. and uh i got really mad at the little dog the little french bulldog because he we, we put him in a, a room to let him sleep for the night and then we woke up and he had been scratching the door all ah. night so the wood was all fucked up mm. and i put his face in it and i was like no no <laughs> does, no! That, does that work probably not i'm i that's a sincere question i wasn't yeah, being passive probably aggressive. probably didn't do it no i'm saying like i'm, I'm with you it was probably right. a totally useless exercise <laughs> But my girlfriend afterwards said, that was the maddest I've ever seen you. And I'm glad to know that you have that in you. Wow. And I was like, what? Wow. And she goes, yeah, you know, in case we have kids someday. And I want to know that you will be able to, to discipline them like that. And I was like, hang on a second. <laughs> Hang on. That's, you're accusing you of being a pussy? Yeah. Like, yeah. Because, <laughs> you know, she'd never seen me like, I, I don't I never raise my voice to her. Uh, you know, we get in fights, but it's never like we're never yelling at each other. Right. Um, and uh, you know, she'd never seen me raise my voice to a little thing like a dog before. Mm -hmm. And so in a weird way, it almost like I think turned her on. Um 
Uh, which yeah. you know who knows but nice, uh man. fuck yeah bro yeah i know i know he really it's angry hot, sex dog. um <laughs> fuck yeah <dude. laughs> no but dude so <laughs> so then i was like well well do you expect me to discipline our children and to what extent because i was like i don't really want to have to yell at them the way that i just yelled at that dog mm -hmm. she goes no 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 you, you've got it You've got to because kids can act up. Kids, and you know, you we, we it's good to know that you can set them straight. And I was immediately like, "Well, that's going to be your job." And then the second you're out of the room, <laughs> I'm going to be like, "Don't worry about it." <laughs> She's just mad because you know we got the wrong apartment. <laughs> it's every mom's nightmare. Yeah, and then play the play the good cop bad yeah. cop and totally submarine her efforts <laughs> to, to, to to discipline <laughs> to discipline the kids, but. It does beg the question, you know, like what is beating? What is allowed? Because some, you know, some parents will say like, you can never lay a hand on your children. Remember when Adrian Peterson, the, the news came out that he used a willow switch on his kid. And then all these parents were like, that's, that's beating your kids. And then a lot of other people were like, that's fine. Shut the fuck up. Mm -hmm. um, and I do think it's a cultural thing. Definitely. And I think that... Uh, it's hard to say, like, where's the line? At what point are you kind of breaking the law right. of child abuse? Totally. You know? So where, where do you stand on all that? I think it's like, I'm, I'm not going to act like it's my business what someone does with their kid unless, like you said, they're committing crimes. Mm -hmm. If you're, like, fucking whipping your kid and drawing blood, like, that's obviously not okay across the board. Mm -hmm. Smacking your kid around a little bit, again, there's, I use that loosely. I think to a degree it's acceptable, especially if your kid's a little piece of shit. All right. Well, you're using <laughs> a lot of loose terms here. <laughs> smacking your kid around, the yeah. kid's being a piece of shit. What does that mean, smacking your kid around? I can mean... You're talking about like actually taking your hand and smacking them in the face? Like maybe. I'm not like necessarily against that. That never happened to me. Um, but like, you know, spanking or threatening with the belt and not actually using it. Or yelling or punishing or whatever. You would you take your belt out of your pants? Not and never actually like, use come, it. Come here. You're one step away. It seems a little dated, but like it was it wasn't something I was unfamiliar with. Meaning my parents didn't do it to me, but I had relatives who maybe would do stuff like that. I've heard right. of other people's parents doing it. I don't think it's the end of the world. And I think that it's better to use force against your children than to let them grow up thinking that they deserve everything. And having them be right. shitty people. There was, uh, in the most recent season of Last Chance You, which I know you saw and we both agreed was spectacular, there was a dad in that show uh, of yes. one of the stars, Dior yes. Walker Scott. And the dad was a, an, an army or a Navy vet and um, believed in sort of disciplining his kids. And one of the things he would do, I think one day Dior, his young son, made fun of a kid at school for his haircut and then he came home and the dad heard about it from the school and the dad cut his son's hair in a very humiliating embarrassing fashion like gave him kind of like an old man bald mm -hmm. up top around the sides and then made him go to school like that oh yeah I remember and that. humiliated him and broke his spirit and that hearing that actually like broke my my heart because that's psychological warfare that's, against oh, That's going kid. overboard, for sure. Then but, you sent him on a bus, too, like across the country. Yeah, yeah. Refused to pay for his pay take, plane ticket. There, yeah. I was amazed at how the dad seemed like a uh, so academic. Like, he did. I, I was surprised to hear, once I heard the dad talk, that he acted like that. Right, right. But it did seem to me like the dad had gone overboard. And I understood Definitely. that character's you know not wanting to see him and the kid didn't talk to the dad anymore i haven't finished the season but at the point that i was watching he and his dad had not yeah well go check that out too last chance you i think it's the best it's documentary filmmaking out there um at least in sports but moving back to this subject of punishing your kids or disciplining your kids i i can't help but wonder if the psychological harm and granted, some kids, I think, can react differently and can process it differently of laying a hand on your kid will outweigh the benefits of that discipline. Mm. And if there isn't some other way to achieve 
a similar result. Mm -hmm. I, I'm sure that there might be, but I I think that it can be done without destroying the kid's brain. Right. Like, what if you what if you told your kid for what you just did, you now have to do like manual labor. You have to go, you know, weed the garden for three hours, or you have to go paint the neighbor's porch, the old lady neighbor. And what if they say, no, fuck you? Then you're like, then you have to say like, all right, well, I'm taking your phone away for two weeks mm. until you paint the porch. Yeah, it's all good stuff. But then, then you start to worry. Then I start to worry. Okay, well, then the kid's going to say, okay, fine. Take my phone away and they take the phone away. And then the kid goes out and like does heroin as <laughs> revenge. Yeah, and then you've I mean, lost always your a risk. kid. That's always a risk. You've lost the kid. Right. And I think that that, but the, you know, the, the, again, it's a it seems like a balancing act. It's funny. The two guys who don't have kids are talking about this, but you know, it's okay. Like, I think that there are things that we can assume and think about it. And you know, if you guys have other suggestions, definitely let us know or whatever. But I think you always run the risk of, you know, your kid falling off, falling by the wayside, right. which is why parents are reluctant to use discipline sometimes. And then the kid just becomes a little shit. I, I, feel as though by the time our kids are teenagers the traps and the potential you know opportunities for trouble are going to be so much more dangerous and insidious than they are they were for us in what, what sense so we didn't have smartphones right we didn't we didn't have the threat of you know, posting a, an ex-girlfriend's nudes as like revenge porn. Oh yeah, that's crazy. You know, and not that we would have, but I'm saying like, you know, kids these days in high school, they're passing around nudes. They're pass, you know, they're bullying each other online. Uh, the all the shit that 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 stuff is is a different world, mm -hmm. and it's it's fucking brutal, man. Yeah, yeah. And schools are you know developing burner accounts on facebook and tiktok to monitor what the kids are doing in their own homes and then suspending them for like posting mean shit oh wow that is crazy and that was just a non-factor right it was a us. complete non-factor you're right yeah, and just like tiktok is like you know you can be tiktok and all this like provocative stuff as a 15 year old girl and who the fuck knows who's looking at it all that stuff you're right. There's definitely it's definitely more complicated. So I I don't know. I don't think I intend to ever put a hand on my kids. At least, you know, mm -hmm. in a in a hurt in a way that like stings. Right. Right. Um, I'm, I'm hoping I'm not there's against another it, way. So. Like, yeah. and I agree. I hope there's another way. And even though you've made a lot of very good points, I still just think it's like not a big deal. I hope it's okay to say this. My girlfriend is in favor of it. Mm -hmm. She was spanked and she was like, yeah, I was being a little shit mm -hmm. and it corrected me. Interesting. So then, then that's an interesting thing too, because I got spanked every once in a while. It sounds like maybe you did not. I didn't. So yeah. And I guess it's like what you know to be yeah, effective. Exactly. I mean, you have a criminal record for burning down Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> I got like a parking ticket once for smoking weed. I mean, <laughs> okay, dude. tomato, tomato. <laughs> <laughs> hilarious um but i mean dude you know it's a good point i think though at the end of the day a little spanking you know what i mean i never you know my parents weren't kicking my ass by any yeah. by any stretch of the imagination and yeah. quite frankly it, i could probably count on my fingers the amount of times that i had a hand laid on me by anybody well you say but again you say smack smack them around a little what about like a titty twister or an ear grab yeah those are i mean those those seem like old the titty twister is weirdly sexual and bullying you're I, bullying your kid <laughs> the ear grab isn't crazy it seems a little dated but yeah gra grab him by the earlobe and mm -hmm. it hurts so when you initially asked that question i'm not it sounds like you have so many thoughts about conventional spanking as a disciplinary action that maybe that is what you meant but is that what you meant or did you mean sexual? well yeah like now i want i do want to get into the sexual side of it because but, but is that what you meant at first when you it asked? was okay okay it was um and i here's the thing I don't I I don't mind spanking. Um I it, it's it's like a punctuation mark 
for me. I, I, dude, totally. I I like I'm oh, I'm into spanking, but I'm not a spanker. No. And I've <laughs> it's fine. dated girls who basically insisted upon it. Dude, I've heard I know a girl that multiple guys I know have hooked up with her and all of them are like she just wanted to be spanked and that's all we did. I was fully clothed. I pulled oh down my her pants God. and spanked her and that's all that she wanted. Well, that's like straight up infantilism. That's that's like the extreme spanking situation. Yeah. In her head, I just call her spanky. I've never actually said it <laughs> out loud, but to me, that girl is spanky. I still follow her on Instagram and I'll be like, she'll be with a guy. I'm like, that guy's doing a lot of spanking. Her butt cheeks are redder than an orangutan's <laughs> yeah, right dude. now. Literally. Uh, yeah, I think bending a girl over your knee and then pulling her pants down and like saying you've been bad and doing right. that that's a totally different charade using a ruler oh my god <laughs> yeah but bad no girl. it usually it's like during sex and it's usually for me when the girl is on top which can lead to some it's difficult i find because you're coming back at yourself Right. And I'll get a bunch of like what I would call um uh sort of like, you know, n you want the the nice crisp spank cl sound, yeah. right? Like the like. clap. But a lot of the time I'll get the thud. Yeah. Cuz I don't you, hit and it you gotta right. Do it again. And then you got to do it again. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes you get three or four thuds in a row and you're like, "Fuck, this is embarrassing." You feel her drying up. Yeah, she's like she's like, <laughs> "Get it right." You know, you want to ring the bell. You don't want to be just <laughs> knocking on a dead door. You know what I mean? And then you start to wonder, well, is it the shape of her butt cheeks? Are, are they not flat enough? I have to think flatter butt cheeks probably result in a crisper uh, spanking sound. But that's only if you're doing a flat plane with your so hand. So you, you curve cup, the you hand. Cup, boom. Yeah. Dude, mm. I would also argue that this is not spanking. This is just smacking that ass. Oh, but that's still spanking. I think spanking requires like assuming the position of being spanked, whether Get it's kneeling or here. being bent on all fours while you're kneeling and you're spanking them. No. If they're on top of you and you're slapping that ass, that's smacking that ass, slapping that ass. I don't call that. Spanking. So you're telling me it's impossible to spank someone while you're having sex. If you have your penis inside someone, I don't think it's any longer spanking. Disagree. hundred percent. Hard disagree. But dude, I agree. If you're hitting it from the back, you smack from the side, then you even do the, the crossover right hand to oh, the left butt cheek the smack. Oh, crisscross. And then you just hold it there, yes. which is where, oh, fuck, literally <laughs> comes from. It's the crossover smack of the ass. Oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah, the downward smack. The, the, I, when she's on top and the, and the, 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 the comeback the to me uh, spank is hard. You're doing it blind. You know, you, you, you don't want to miss because it's, it's <laughs> painful to slap someone on their lower back. It really it is. is. It very, is. Very painful. Also, like thighs and legs, painful. Mm -hmm. But somehow the butt cheek is much more absorbent as a spank center than, uh, than other parts of the body. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, I don't know. I don't mind a, good, a, a little spank. What is, when a girl wants you to spank her, what is the number of spanks you're supposed to deliver where she is then satisfied? Maybe it varies. But like, do you, do you keep coming back to it throughout? So I think though, the spank dynamic requires you to take charge. Uh-huh. So I think you're allowed to then dictate what is the appropriate amount of spanks to be handed out. And at which point when you decide whether verbally or non-verbally, that is enough is enough. If you're in charge enough of the situation, it should be enough for her. Got it. That's my favorite. I, I worry that after two or three, you know, on the money spanks with the noise, yeah. you know, like a clap of uh, crisp thunder, uh, I, or, or like imagine you're, you're puncturing like a, a bag that came in a shipping <laughs> box, you know, you, yeah. um, <laughs> yeah. nice uh, tightly packed air bet bubble um after two or three of those it starts to get more and more painful and right. the, you get those like raised hand yeah. prints yeah i don't want to keep hitting that because i think i'm i don't think that's good so I, th I think that you can go and i'm not trying to act like i'm the expert on this but my my thought is once you do it if you hit hard and then you start hitting hard she's like oh that actually hurt you say, shut the fuck up. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> However, 
I am joking and that's not my style, but I feel that if you were to use that, say, shut the fuck up, but then you don't actually hit her again, that maybe can turn her on more. Ooh. <laughs> oh, that, and I won't actually hurt. shut the fuck up. Yeah. And then you don't hit her again. It's interesting. <laughs> it's interesting. Like, no, you're... no, you're not wrong. You're not I'm wrong. Not wrong I, I have become so much more passive sexually in COVID. And I don't think my girlfriend likes it at all. That you become passive. Passive and sensitive and very like, I ask her like, is that okay a lot? Instead of like, you like oh, that. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know? Is this okay? Is that? I, it, it, you know, I, I just think I, it, it, it harkens back to when we talked about how I said I've gotten a lot worse at sex. That's true. And I think a big part of it is I, I'm not assertive anymore. I'm not confident. I'm kind of like, you know, wouldn't you rather play cribbage? That's sort of my <laughs> thought process. We've reached a point of cohabitation and codependency where a lot of the other activities we do, whether it's hiking, <laughs> this sounds so pathetic, hiking or going stand up paddling or whatever. I, to me, I generate more happiness from that than I do from sex. And I'm sad to say it, you know? Yeah. But like we're just together all the time. Right. And I know there is uh, a little bit of lust that is lost. And that, unfortunately, I think it makes her feel less sexy. I certainly don't feel that sexy. Um interesting and we ended up we ended up just kind of being like more teammates than interesting interesting but i would imagine that after a night of like high apartment viewing you guys bond in a level where maybe then it spices up the evening session dude i couldn't tell you the last time we had sex at night oh interesting i don't think that's that weird not when you're you know dwelling together yeah. When you're sort of quarantining together. I, we, it's usually like a middle of the day right. affair. The afternoon bang is a solid thing yeah. when it comes to working from home and co Three hours after the most recent meal, teeth brushed, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Uh, dude, I don't think you're saying anything crazy at all. I mean, I think these are normal things that like a maturing relationship sort of things kind of like morph into different forms. Right. You know? It's crazy to me to think back on times in my life when I was single where, you know, you'd be 14 drink, drinks deep, yeah. three in the morning, and you would still be able to, like, have some wild put snacks. on a show. Totally, totally, totally. It's just different. Yeah. Let me ask you this. Has there ever been a time where you did something really fun? And this might take a little while to think about because it's very specific. But, like, you were doing something that was really fun. And you'd be like, man, the only way that this activity would be better if I was, is if I was banging my girlfriend right now. Huh. <laughs> That's a good question. And here's an example. I'll give you an example. I went on this crazy hike in Norway once. It mm. was like after hours through the forest. We, I didn't see a human. And we got to the top and it was this magnificent fjord, incredible thing. And I was like, this would be fun to be banging my girlfriend right now. That's cool. That's cool. That's like a specific time where that would yeah. actually make sense. I think for me, it's more broadly <laughs> um, changes of scenery in general, especially like beds, whether it's a hotel or a vacation. vacation. Yeah. You think like there's something about like okay it's okay if we destroy this room right you know That's um, fun. or like let's explore that over there this is new this is novel um but yeah dude I don't know I'm a, I'm a little like saddened by my diminishing libido uh <laughs> and too much Peloton dude I don't know what it is man sweating I, out your sex drive is it okay of me to say this I don't know if sex is all that important for a healthy relationship it's interesting man i don't know i i don't know maybe not especially as you get older i've started to consider that as a as a truth more recently and i'm sure a lot of people will hear that and say like well that that means that they're not in a healthy relationship, but you know, whatever. That's not to imply that you're not having sex. No, sex not being that important doesn't mean you're not having sex. Correct. Which is an important. Yeah, we're, we're still we're still having regular sex. I just find that other stuff is much more of a priority for me in terms of 
building the relationship. Right. Um, and this is going to sound sad, but I have been in relationships where sex was kind of the what we always resorted to. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, you did it two or three times a day. That's crazy. And all those relationships ended. Right, 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 right. Where sex was kind of all you had. Right. Inevitably, that fell apart. Totally. It makes sense. Um, so I wonder. That's just something I've been thinking about. Well, yeah. it's a fair thought. Hmm. I have a question for you about something. Hit me. Not, not to change the subject. Spank but. me. <laughs> Let me spank you with this one. Yeah. I was thinking about the concept of lying about your age in general huh. from many different perspectives. So first of all, it's like the different types of people who might lie about their age and why. Secondly, have you ever lied about your age? What, oh, were, yeah. the, what were the circumstances? Why did you do it? I just want to explore this topic. I think it's fascinating. Yes. Yes. So have you ever lied about your age? Absolutely. And why did you do it? Well, the, the, fir- the easy answer is like you lie about your age to get into bars or whatever. Okay. So, absolutely. Let's let's make a little uh, adjustment to this question. Yeah, lying to say that you're younger. Oh, that's what you meant. Yes, because so, when I was younger, I would lie to say that I was older. Right, but as an adult, and especially like, have you ever? Li- and I know that women, you know, historically, supposedly do this. I don't necessarily know any per- specific examples, but like lying to say that you're younger than you are. Have you ever done it? Why? No. I've never lied to say that I was younger than I was. I think maybe, yeah, no, I don't think so. Okay. But I also still consider myself young. No, you are for sure. I now I'm getting, you know, I'm starting to be around more people who are younger than me. Mm-hmm. Whereas like I used to, for much of my You're life, I was always one. the youngest guy. Right. Um, but that's, no, I don't really see why I would do that. So dude, so check this out. So I lied about my age in a very unique way once. Hmm. I was much older than this girl. I liked her. I wanted to hook up with her. She was like, I don't know how she was 10 years younger than me or something. And I, she knew that I had a younger brother. So at one point in the night, she asked me how old my brother was. So I lied about my brother's age. Oh boy. (laughs) Because if I had said my brother's age, she would know that I was older than my brother, which I was afraid would have freaked her out that I was that old. So I lied about my age and I lied about my brother's age. Goodness. I said my brother was 24 when he was 28. <laughs> how, how old did you say you were? I didn't. I didn't have to. Oh, you just did the brother thing. I lied by proxy. I lied about my age by, by proxy. Yeah. By lying about my brother's age, I was therefore lying about my age. Interesting. <laughs> did you end up hooking up with that girl? Yeah. And then do you think that, do you think it wouldn't have happened if you told her your actual age? I don't know. But I just wanted to give myself the best chance. I just don't know that I've ever heard of a girl who said, I wish he had been younger. Totally. Unless you're talking about a girl dating like a senior citizen or, <laughs> you know, like in, 28 to 45. Bro, but in which case, if you're dating a senior citizen, you're like, this guy's 28, really? The guy's like 60. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the guy's a know. walker. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, dude, I see comedians and actors and shit. I have male friends who won't tell me how old they are who are actors. Yeah. I get that. I, I think, think that's stupid, though. Uh, agreed. Especially for, for guys to do. Yeah. I know that women in the entertainment business have this fear of like hitting a certain age and like being too old or whatever. And I understand that as like a reasonable fear. But like I have guy friends who I'll be like, dude, how old are you? And they're like, why do you want to? Like, why? Mm. I'm like, what do you mean why? Sorry that I asked you're a fucking weirdo. I like you less. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a strange thing that age has become... A, a personal sometimes rude question right you're you know it used to be just a joke of if you asked a woman her age she would jokingly respond you're not supposed to ask a woman her age right but now there's actual venom in it there's sort of uh, haughtiness mm. there's a who are you to fucking ask me my to- age totally and it leads me to believe that maybe people are doing it and i just don't even know because sometimes in comedy i'll see a guy who, who I know, whatever, and I assume he's a certain age. And then all of a sudden, I'll see him two years later, and I'm like, oh my God, that guy was, has been much older than I thought this whole time. And I don't mm. know if people are just interested in trying to look younger, or if people straight up are just like lying or trying to be ambiguous. I think the problem is that people often compare themselves by age, right? So there's an implied hierarchy of 
if you say, well, how old are you to someone? And they say, I'm 33, in, you know, especially a comedian, they might think, oh, you're, you're hinting, I can't believe you're not farther along right. by this age, right? right? Right. And I've definitely thought, you know, one thing that actually gives me comfort is learning that a lot of the comedians that I look up to who are really hitting their stride or have, you know, hit a new gear or, or, or levels ahead of me are multiple years older than me. Right, right. And there's stress that comes with finding out that somebody who's more accomplished than you is younger than you. Definitely. There, I remember the moment I realized Nadal was only a couple of weeks younger than me. Yeah, but see, that doesn't bother me because that's just a different sphere. I get it, but I was a tennis player at the time when I realized this. And it was just, like, just disappointing to be like, wow, this guy is king of the world and I'm yeah. not even the king of my conference. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But all right, fine. Fair. That's a different, that's a different point. But you're right. I, I often look at, at people who like, George Clooney to me is somebody who gives me comfort, knowing that he got his big break in his late thirties. That's a comforting thing to know. Was that ER? I think so. I think that's the first yeah, time. He John ever... Hamm was the same way. Exactly, first recurring role, and I think in comedy especially, it's a common thing. I remember Bill Burr saying, "You either make it right away, like you get lucky, or you make it when you're like in your forties, right? Whatever making it means to him, which apparently means making it, making it. Yeah, yeah, you know? arenas. Yeah, yeah. So interesting. Well, I, I wonder about the age thing, too. Yeah. Well, uh, send us any of your thoughts on age and spanking, uh, <laughs> corporal punishment, child abuse, all of that to oopsthepodcast at gmail.com. Uh, you can also check in with Chris on the weight loss, healthy uh, lifestyle challenge. Challenge. Not really a challenge. Just a, uh, an initiative. Uh, like DM that. him, Chris MP4 on instagram chris.mp4 chris.mp4 mm -hmm. i'm francis ellis at francis ccls he is not julio with a j julio gallerati and we will see you soon thanks if you like that video check out our channel where we have way more videos fucking i just don't know how to do this this is unbelievable if you like that video we have way more videos on our channel please like and subscribe turn on notifications if you want to know when there are new ones um, but if not check them out and we appreciate it oops <laughs>